I, want, I once heard a quote that a psychologist said, a dog can do in minutes what it takes them years to accomplish. I like her. You like Nina? I like Nina. Yeah. She's a baby. She's your baby. She's a big 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 baby. Yeah. <laughs> Therapy animals can be various animals that are certified to visit patients in facilities like hospitals, assisted living centers, and even schools. Therapy animals can be essential for patients' health and even provide exercise. And this is um, a way to help brighten their day. Um, just the visits in general from whether the therapy dogs or the individual's um, animal, it just brightens their spirits. It's good for depression. Um, you know, the homesickness, it just helps, um, you know, it just gets them through the day too. If we're doing an exercise, they think about that. Oh, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. But when it comes to a pet, they forget all that. And they just reach out and they move. And they don't realize they're doing therapy at the same time. The most typical therapy animal is dogs. There is no specific breed that makes the best therapy dog. It just needs to be a friendly, loving canine and a generous patient owner. At the Lawrence County Humane Society, two women, Lois Winter and Jan Grigsby, own and work in the community with their therapy dogs. Both women have been involved with dog therapy for over 10 years. Lois's first dog was adopted and is a black lab named Lizzie. Lizzie was an exceptional therapy dog that ultimately taught her current 8-year-old boxer, Dina, everything. Jan has two dogs that participate in therapy, Maddie, a 12-year-old Shepherd Collie mix, and Bailey, a 5-year-old Jack Russell mix. Both were adopted from shelters. However, just having a friendly, loving, non-aggressive dog does not make it a perfect candidate for pet therapy. Dogs must go through a variety of testing to be certified. Dogs are certified through an organization called Therapy Dogs International. A local center that tests for Therapy Dog International is located in Butler and called the Butler Dog Training Association. A test costs about $25 and lasts about 10 minutes. For a dog to pass, it must complete all 14 steps successfully in the test. Uh, dogs definitely have to be well-groomed. They have to be, a lot of it depends on owner and dog, so they work as a team. So not only are they well-groomed, so you're keeping your dog well-groomed, you're also keeping your dog well-vetted. Your dog is healthy, up-to-date on immunizations, and of course they have rabies, license, all of those kind of things are taken care of when they come. A dog has to be able to have a stranger come up and pet the dog go over the dog with a brush or a comb, handle ears, pick up paws. They have to, of course, not care that somebody's touching their paw because that will happen in a nursing home. Of course, somebody will want to shake hands with a dog. And the dog also has to do basic obedience. So that is a sit and a down on command. They have to do a recall on command. They also have to be able to do a stay owner leaves them on a stay, walks about 10 to 20 feet away, returns, the dog needs to stay in that position. They have to be able to meet another dog and handler team and walk up, the handlers shake hands, the dogs have to actually ignore each other and the other handlers. They have to be able to work around handicapped equipment, really important. The dogs have to be uh, very comfortable with wheelchair, walker, crutches, cane, those type of things, and with people using those. So usually we try to make the test very, very similar to a nursing home situation. So we'll have a crowd of people come out, use handicapped equipment, and the dogs have to go up and visit everybody. And people in that type of situation, a lot of them, they might be coughing, they might be a little slow in their step, they might be talking very loudly, they're heading of the dogs might be a little rough. So again, we're looking for the dog's reaction to all these different types of situations. See, a dog also have to, has to be able to do a leave it. So they have to be able to walk past food on the floor. Not always an easy um, <laughs> step for a lot of dogs. So they have to be able to do that. And that is because a lot of times you walk into a nursing home situation, there are pills on the floor. There might be liquid. Uh, spills on the floor that you don't know what they are. So again, you're trying to keep your dog, of course, very safe. 
Dogs also have to be able to handle a three minute handoff where you hand your dog off to a stranger. Not that we recommend that, but that can happen in an emergency situation. So you have to be able to hand your dog off three minutes. Stranger, you go out of sight and your dog is with this stranger. They can show only mild separation anxiety. No whining, no crying, no barking, no jumping. Those kind of things. So again, we just want to see a dog that can handle a situation like that. And the last step actually is uh, with children where there are children playing in the distance, maybe about 30 feet away. Kids are playing, throwing balls, maybe they're riding scooters, whatever. And the dogs have to be able, again, to handle that type of a distraction. So that's basically the test. Congratulations, you passed. <laughs> Once a dog passes, they can begin helping others with therapy. Between both Lois and Jan, they make a total of six regular visits to facilities in the Newcastle and New Wilmington area. Both women find pet therapy a rewarding experience and have witnessed some special encounters with their dogs. Yeah, I have one goosebump moment. There was a woman who was in Jameson Hospital and she had had a stroke. And this was with my other dog, Lizzie. Uh, the woman had a stroke. She was not responding to anything. The daughters were both in the room at the time and they were, as I passed the room, I could hear the daughters asking the mother, mother, please open your eyes, please wake up. And she just was not responding at all. And they saw the dog walk by and the, one of the daughters said, come here, she used to have a dog. Can you please come in here and just see if she does anything. So Lizzie put her paws up on the bed and started licking the woman's arms. It gives me goosebumps to talk about it. The woman opened her eyes and started petting the dog and started talking to the dog. And it was like everybody burst into tears. Her recovery had begun at that moment and it took a dog to do that. The daughters, the daughters' voices did nothing but the cold wet nose and a tongue uh, started the whole process then and they told me the next time that I went to the hospital that the woman went home and she was just doing great. Yes, we had pet therapy and Dina went in to see the patient who had not been responding for several days and today when the dog got on his bed and he touched her he just thought she was beautiful. He woke up and he talked to her and I mean it's just amazing what she can do for people that don't respond any other time. They, they do respond to animals. Seems better than family sometimes. It's just that warm, I don't know, animal instinct. another patient that I went to uh, visit in at Jameson Care Center. Now my dogs, sometimes they're on leash and sometimes they're off leash, but they're always right there beside me and they don't stray off to go anywhere. So I had Dina one time and we were walking past this room and there was a man that was just laying there and it looked like he would bite my head off if I walked in. He just looked so mean. Dina said, I'm going in to see him and I'm like Dina get back here and I'm calling her and she ignored me she went right into the room and went over to the man and at that point I wasn't sure what his reaction was going to be is he going to hit her is he going to well, I didn't know what my instinct was that this was not a good room to be in Dina however said I'm going in anyway he turned around looked at the dog and brightened up and started talking to the dog. We stayed there for 10 minutes. And he said, I was so depressed and in so much pain that this is what I needed. And it just, it was an amazing process. And there's so many stories like that. I really think they, the dogs make a breakthrough every day. Somebody really appreciates it or somebody, they, they get through in some way. Patients even know the importance of pet therapy and consider the dogs more than just an animal. Uh, she's, oh, she's like a family to me when I see her. Animals bring something to you. 
They make you feel good and you forget about your problems. <laughs> Well, I don't get much visitors, and it makes it nice. You can sit down and tell them what happened during the last month and help each other that way. Everybody ought to have a dog. And as the old saying is, the dog is your best friend. And uh, I've seen them sticking closer to their brothers sometimes and stand up and fight for you. No matter what it is to them, family, or just a friend, the dogs bring them happiness and joy. Both Lois and Jan find pet therapy a wonderful and worthwhile program. It's great for the dogs, it's great for the patients, it's great for the staff, and it's great for me because I get a lot out of it too. I get a lot of joy seeing the joy that my dog can bring to people. Oh, yeah. 